welcome, dear viewers, to another study number six in a series of 13 under part two of the biblical stewardship exposition. And as usual, I am your host presenter, Pastor Mchagwe. Today's title is The God of Relationships. The God of Relationships. May I begin with a propositional statement here? Two of them, which are of great note. They are worth considering as we go into this study. Because this, at the end of the day, is what I'm about to prove in this presentation. A religion that has no relationship with God is an empty religion. Therefore, a relationship with God and the giving of his blessings to those who are in a relationship with him comes first before the demand for obedience. That's the first proposition. The next proposition is that God will not demand a tithe or an offering before you accept his lordship in your life. My dear viewer, this is what we are about to delve into and prove from the biblical point of view, that these two propositional statements, they are of great value. We want now to look into the relationships that God has made with humanity throughout the Bible and sample them and see whether these two propositional statements qualify. We begin with our ancestor, Adam. Genesis 1, 28, the Bible says, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. 29, And God said, See, I have given you every plant producing seed on the face of the earth, and every tree which has fruit producing seed, they will be for your food. So we see God going in a relationship with humanity. But then, in the next verse, chapter 2, verse 16, we see a call to obedience. Genesis 2, 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. 17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you shall eat thereof, you shall surely die. So here we see that there is a relationship beginning first and then there is a demand of following God or obeying God coming in the life later. So if I am to summarize and analyze those texts that we have read, this is what we are discovering, my dear viewer. That God initiated humanity into a relationship with himself prior to the fall of mankind. And number two, God provided for humanity's basic needs. So when God gets you into a relationship, he even takes responsibility of providing you because he is our father. Point number three that we discover when you summarize these verses is that a relationship and the blessings from God preceded the call to obedience. And this is exactly my two propositional sentences are trying to suggest. Even when Adam fell from the grace of God because of eating the forbidden tree, this is what we see in the Bible account in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. Man in his fallen condition, we see Yahweh God called the man and said to him, Where are you? My dear friend and my dear Christian, Every time you run away from the presence of God by doing what is wrong, you must understand that the God of relationship is looking for you and seeking for your coming back. And that's the illustration of the prodigal son story that you read in the text in the New Testament. Even in the Old Testament, the God of love is the one who was looking for Adam and caring for Adam, and he says, where are you? Verse 21 and Yahweh God, I'm using the, the World English Bible. And Yahweh God made coats of skins for Adam and for his wife and he clothed them. So look at this. 
They were hiding in the trees, among the shrubs, clothing themselves with the fig leaves. But when God found them, he provided a solution for their physical and the spiritual problem. So let me summarize what we have discovered in those verses. Number one, it's that God visited even man in his fallen condition. He visited him. He called for man. He looked for fallen humanity. Why? Because he was wanting to relate with mankind. This is why I'm saying he's a God of relationships. Number two, God offered a solution for the fallen humanity in two ways. The spiritual problem of falling from the grace of God, verse 15 of chapter 3, the Bible says God promised them the coming of the seed of the woman to come and crush the head of the serpent. That's the coming of Jesus Christ. To take care of the spiritual problem, Jesus was promised to come. To take care of the physical nakedness, God, according to chapter 3, verse 21 of Genesis, he killed an innocent lamb and removed its skin and clothed Adam and Eve. This is where we get the connotation of salvation by grace through faith in the death of Jesus Christ. Righteousness by faith, it comes out of this text, my dear friend. Here is a God of relationship. So what you see, number five, is that God should never be saved out of fear, but love, as the story of Adam and Eve portrays. When they heard the voice, they ran away. But God, when he came, he brought them closer to them and says, please don't save me out of fear. I want you to save me out of love. The God of relationship, he wants you to love him and do what he wants you to do. We are moving into the another man that God went into a relationship. His name is Abraham. Before he changed to Abraham, he was Abraham. At 75 years old, in chapter 12 of Genesis verse 1, the Bible says, And Yahweh said to Abraham, Get out of your country and from your own relatives, from your own father's house, to the land that I will show you. Verse 2, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of Yahweh came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Don't be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, and I am your exceeding great reward. Listen to that one, my dear viewer. When God goes in a relationship with you, he takes responsibility of your protection. He tells you right now, don't be afraid of the dangers of worshiping God. You could be the only one in the family who wants to save God. The Bible is saying, yes, here is a God who wants to relate with you. Therefore, make a relationship with him. He will protect you. He will be your shield. He will be your reward. After that promise of God's call and protection, the next one we see is a call to obedience. Genesis chapter 17 verse 1 reveals that. When Abraham was 99 years old, Yahweh appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. The Bible continues in chapter 17 verse 9, God said to Abraham, as for you, you will keep my covenant, you and your seed after you throughout your generation. After God called out Abraham out of his own family and relatives and nation, he promised to bless him. And after that, he is now calling him, go into a covenant with me, you and your children throughout your generation. After they went in a covenant, listen to what chapter 18 of Genesis 17 says. Yahweh said, will I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? This was the day when God was en route to Sodom to go and destroy it, but they passed through in the land of Abraham. See how friendly God becomes. He couldn't even keep his secret to himself because Abraham was a friend. He was in a relationship with Abraham. Yes, my dear friend, we see when he was put in a covenant, later on Abraham began to obey God. Abraham revealed his obedience to God after going in a relationship, after going in a covenant relationship, after receiving the blessings from God. Chapter 14, verse 19. 
One day we are told that Abraham went to war against the captors of Lot, his nephew. When he defeated him, came back, and this is a story in chapter 14, verse 19, he met the king of Salem, Melchizedek, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. Verse 20, and Abraham was blessed by God through Melchizedek, and listen to verse 20, and blessed be most high God, who has delivered your enemies into your hands? And Abraham gave him a tenth of all what he got from the spoil. So here we see the tithing system again comes in the relationship between Abraham and God. After receiving the blessings, after being protected, after going in a loving relationship with God, Abraham had a duty towards his God and he brought a tenth giving to the representative of God, Melchizedek, who blessed him on behalf of God and reminded him, had it not been God, you were going to die in this battle. And Abraham remembered that God promised him that don't be afraid, I am your shield and I am your reward. Friend of mine, let's analyze this text that we have read and summarize what they are telling us now. Number one, is that God entered a covenant relationship with Abraham. And number two, is that God blessed him and he became his shield and he became his reward. Number three, is that God expected Abraham to walk blamelessly before him and keep his covenant. Number four, is that the relationship and blessings from God preceded Abraham's obedience and tithing. So dear friend, you cannot think of tithing to God before God calls you into a relationship, before God gives you the blessings. Another friend that we are seeing, the same friend of God, Abraham, another test came to his life. In chapter 22, the book of Genesis, verse 1. And it came to pass, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham meaning to test him, to prove how far his relationship with God has gone deeper. And he said to him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. 22, verse 2. And he said, Take now your son whom you lovest and get you into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell you. So what do we see? 22, verse 7. Isaac and Abraham started off into the journey to go to Mount Moriah. On the way, on verse 7, Isaac spoke to the father, Abraham, and said, Abraham, and he said, my father, and he said, here I am, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the firewood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Verse 8, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Let's analyze the text that we are seeing here. It's that number one, before God tested Abraham whether he could give back to him, God gave Isaac first to Abraham before testing Abraham to see the depth of his relationship to him. That's what we are understanding here. Number two, Abraham's faith could not waver or shake because of the total dependence on God in his relationship. Today, many people are failing to be faithful to God, to return back to God, even when he has given them already, it's because they have no faith in God. It's because there is no relationship with God. Child of God, point number three that we learn is that God will never demand from you what he has not given you in the first place. God could not tell Abraham to bring the tithe before he blessed him. God could not tell Abraham to sacrifice Isaac before he gave Isaac. So in any situation, before you and I are obliged to be obedient to God, it means God has already provided. We are moving into the relationship between God and, and Jacob. Chapter 28 of Genesis reveals another relationship. Verse 15, when Jacob ran away from the parent after stealing the, the blessings of his friend from his father, who was blind, 
He ran away and slept in the night somewhere in Bethel. Verse 15 says, And the Lord came to Jacob while he was sleeping. And this is what the Bible says. And behold, I will be with you, and I'll keep you in all the places where you go, and I will bring you again into this land, for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken of. Listen, my dear viewer. Here is a God talking to a runaway thief who is exhausted and sleeping in the night somewhere in the dark. And he comes and promises him, I will be with you. So God stretched his love and got hold of Jacob when he is sleeping as a sinner. And he tells him, I will keep you and I will be with you. Listen to what Jacob does after he realizes the goodness of God. Genesis chapter 28 verse 20, the Bible comes in and says, And Jacob vowed, and this is the vow that he made. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in the way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again in my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. Jacob affirms the relationship with God. Jacob agrees to go in a relationship with God. But verse 22 says, And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be the house of God, and all that you shall give me, talking of God, all that you shall give me, I will surely give the tenth to you. There we see again tithing comes back in the relationship between God and his believer. Child of God, saints of the Most High God, you cannot go in a relationship with God without God affecting your entire being and your economy. Jacob is promising to bring a tithe after God blesses him and protects him. So let's analyze what we have read in this text again. Number one is that Jacob stole his brother's blessings and ran away for his life because Esau wanted to kill him. Number two is that God met him in the dream and promised him safety and blessings. Jacob vowed to return a tithe from all the wealth God would give him in return. Therefore, the relationship and the blessings from God preceded Jacob's obedience in tithing. And that is what my propositional statements are all about. Before God demands you to obey, he first of all goes in a relationship with you and he blesses you in turn. That's when he wants you to obey. Oh yes, let's go and look into the relationship between God and the nation of Israel. The descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. See what he says in chapter 19 of Exodus verse 4. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. So when God got the nation of Israel, the primary goal is not to take them into the land of Canaan, but to take them into a relationship to himself. That's why we are saying he's a God of relationship. And Hosea 1, 11 verse 1, he says, When Israel was a child, then I loved him and I called my son out of Egypt. So God, out of love, he went into a relationship with the nation of Israel and he got them out of the bondage in, in Egypt. What else did he do? Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 13 says, And God will love you and will bless you, will multiply you, and he will also bless the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your land and your corn and your wine and your oil, and the increase of your, your animals and your flocks and your sheep in the land which he saw to your fathers to give you. Verse 14, you shall be blessed above all people. There shall be no male or female barren among you or among your cattle. After God called them into a relationship, then he promised to bless them, and now we are coming to the call to obedience. Exodus 19 verse 5. Now therefore, after they made a covenant, this is what God expects them now. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people of the earth, for the earth is mine. 
Verse 6, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the children of Israel. How did they respond to that? Chapter 19, verse 8, they responded that this is now our duty, our role to the covenant relationship with God. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. After that, God established the regulations of what they were expected to do after he blesses them. And he tells them in Leviticus 27 verse 30, And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord is it's holy unto the Lord. Verse 32, And concerning the tithe of the herd and of the flock, even whatsoever passes under the road, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. So here we see again in the nation of Israel, after going in a relationship with him, after receiving the blessings, God reminds them, you will need to recognize this relationship as you get blessed in your animal world, as you get blessed in your fields, remember the tithe is mine. So let us analyze this text again. Number one is that God loved and saved Israel from the Egyptian bondage. Number two is that God promised to bless their cattle, their flock, their vineyards, their fields, and their children. Number three, the Israelites were to fear God, to serve God, to love God with all their hearts and their souls. Because of that, God's blessings and relationship on Israelites preceded the tithing duty. Child of God. Tithing on the side of the children of Israel was an evidence of the nation's obedience to the relationship to God. God goes in a relationship with the nation of Judah after they divided into two with the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. That's the context in the book of Malachi. Listen to what Malachi says. Chapter 3, verse 6 of Malachi. For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Verse 7, chapter 3. For from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and you have not kept them. Therefore return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Verse 8. Will a man rob God? And they asked, how are we robbing you? He says, you are robbing me in tithes and in offerings. Again here we see, let's analyze the text. What is it telling us? Number one is that God does not change his character of loving his children, his people. But the nation number two, the nation of Israel or Judah in this context now, they broke away from the relationship with God. Number three, that God wanted them to return to the covenant relationship with him. So when they return to the covenant relationship, that is now, God is reminding them that you will show that you have returned as you come with your tithes and your offerings. Therefore, the relationship and blessings from God preceded tithing and offering returning to God. When people returned to God, then their money would also follow back to God. When people move away from God, then even their money move away from God. This is the spiritual jigsaw puzzle we are puzzling here and trying to put it in its pieces. Friend of mine, as we are coming to the end of this presentation, Jesus came, who was the center of the plan of salvation. Listen to what he says. Jesus and his apostles and his church. Jesus says in John 15 verse 9, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Continue you also in my love. So you see, even Jesus came to demonstrate that love which the Father has to the human race. That relationship based on love that he wants to enjoy with us. Chapter 14, verse 15, the same book of John, Jesus continues, If you love me, keep my commandments. So you see, you cannot start keeping the commandments before you love Jesus. You cannot love Jesus before he draws you in a relationship. This is why in chapter 15, verse 16, he will tell you, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you, that you can come to me and bear much fruit. Friend of mine, we are concluding this study by reminding ourselves these words. 
that God always seeks to be in a relationship with the sinners, but not with their sins. Number two is that God provides security, spiritual and material blessings to all his children. Number three is that believers have a role of fearing God, of serving God, of loving God with all their hearts and with their souls after they go in a relationship. Number four, what we conclude with is that tithing is an integral part of the believer's role to acknowledge God as the owner who blesses them in everything. You cannot be in a relationship with God, my dear viewer, and fail to return your tithes and offerings to him. The God of relationship. Allow me to remind you with this big point that Abraham was a friend of God. Isaac was a friend of God. Jacob was a friend of God. The nation of Israel were friends of God. They were in a relationship with God and they all tithed their increase of the flocks and of their farms to the God who was providing those blessings to them. And you and I, you cannot afford to go in a relationship and then without your tithes and offerings in this relationship. It is my prayer that God will help you and me to go in a relationship with him with all our hearts, with all our soul, and with all our means. May God bless you as we enjoy together this series. Until next time.